Let's talk about the concept of limiting reagent. In this particular case, we will consider more than one reactant. Now, let's just, con let's just take an example. You have been asked to make one perfect Maggie. So let's just say you have been asked to make one perfect Maggie. The way I define a perfect Maggie is when you mix one noodle and one Maggie masala. Okay. So this is how I have defined one perfect Maggie. Now let's just say they asked, they, they gave you uh, seven noodles and three Maggi masalas. And they ask you, how many perfect Maggi can be prepared using these two ingredients? Now, you will say, obviously, three perfect Maggi's can be made. Now, what is the thing that dictates this entire reaction? Who decides that how many perfect Maggi can be made? So you can easily see that the masala decides in this case how many perfect maggi can be made. Why does the masala decides this? Because it is in less quantity. So therefore we can say this, the item which is in less quantity is deciding the entire reaction or how much product will be produced. So the, the, the item which is in less quantity is known as limiting reagent. And I can also say that limiting reagent decides how much product will be produced. All right, now let's take another example. Now in the second case, I gave you seven noodles, but I give you 10 Maggi masala. So in this case, how many uh, Maggi can be, how many perfect Maggi can be produced? Obviously you will say that seven perfect Maggi will be produced. Therefore I can say that the item which is in less quantity dictates how much product will be produced. In this case, the item which is in less quantity is the noodle. Therefore, I can say the noodle will be the limiting reagent and the Maggi masala, which is in excess, which is in excess, will be known as excess reagent. All right. So in any particular reaction, there, there are three possibilities. So let's just, let's just say we take an example where A and B react to form C and D. So the first step will be to identify who is the limiting reagent. So if A is the limiting reagent, then B will be the excess reagent. And if B is the limiting reagent, then A will be the excess reagent. Yeah, there is also a possibility where both A and B are limiting reagent. But before we talk about these cases, let's talk about how to identify a limiting reagent. All right, let's take an example. I'm taking a general reaction. A plus B gives C plus D. Now I balance this reaction. Okay. Now that I have balanced this reaction, the stoichiometric coefficient of A is 2, the stoichiometric coefficient of, sorry, of B is 4, the stoichiometric coefficient of C is 5, and the stoichiometric coefficient of D is 7. Okay. The step one of how to identify a limiting reagent is to divide the number of moles by its stoichiometric coefficient. Divide the number of moles by its stoichiometric coefficient. 
so let's just say moles of it it is given in the question that moles of a is 10 and moles of b is 15 and it, it has been asked which of the following a or b will be a limiting reagent so the step will be we will divide the moles of a by its stoichiometric coefficient which is 2 so 10 divided by 2 is 5 then we will take uh, the b b's mole and divide it by its stoichiometric coefficient which is 4 so number of moles of b is 15 divided by 4 all right between these two we can clearly see okay all right between these two we can clearly see that the moles uh, the na by 2 moles of a divided by 2 is smaller between these two numbers we can clearly see that 5 is smaller therefore we will say that limiting reagent will be a and excess reagent will be b okay let's take another example let's take haber's process now let's balance this reaction okay after i have balanced the reaction it is given in the question that moles of n2 is 15 and moles of h2 is 20 all right, now we need to find which of the following A or uh, N2 or H2 is the limiting reagent. What you have to do is divide the number of moles with its stoichiometric coefficient. The stoichiometric coefficient of N2 is 1 and the stoichiometric coefficient of H2 is 3. Now, if I divide 15 divided by 1 and 20 divided by 3, the, the smaller of the two numbers is obviously of that of hydrogen which makes hydrogen as the limiting reagent and n2 as the excess reagent okay now in this particular question we will try to understand what will be the limiting reagent in each of the three cases in case one in case one or question one let's just say the reaction i'll write it moles have been given as 10 and the moles of b is 5 now we'll divide the number of moles with this with the stoichiometric coefficient the stoichiometric coefficient of a is 2 the stoichiometric coefficient of b is 1 stoichiometric coefficient of c is 1 and stoichiometric coefficient of d is 3 now divide the number of moles with its stoichiometric coefficient moles of a by 2 and moles of b divided by 1 this becomes 10 divided by 2 and 5 divided by 1 in this case you can see that the value of moles by stoichiometric coefficient is coming equal which therefore i can conclude that both a and b are limiting reagent all right, now let's take the second case. The second case, I will write the reaction again because it's not visible. So the reaction is 2A plus B gives C plus 3D. Now in this reaction, the second case is number of moles of A is 15 and number of moles of B is 10. Now we will do the same thing. We will divide the number of moles by its stoichiometric coefficient. 15 divided by 2 and 10 divided by 1 the smaller of the two numbers is obviously that of a so therefore i can say that limiting reagent in this particular question this particular reaction will be a and excess reagent will be b all right so let's take the next case the next case says that moles of a has been given as 20 and moles of b is 5 so what you will do we will divide we'll do the same thing again we will divide the number of moles by stoichiometric coefficient 20 divided by 2 and 5 divided by 1 so in this question we can clearly see that 
the value of moles upon stoichiometric coefficient is less for that of B. Therefore, I can say that B will be the limiting reagent and A will be the excess reagent.